Does bagging a racket help retain the tension of strings? Does bagging a racket help protect the strings? Or is bagging a racket just for looks? In this video, I'll answer these questions and address why it's not commonly seen on the Pro Tour nowadays. And I'll share some ideas about bagging a racket in a plastic bag. All right, let's get into it. All right, so let's first talk about back in the day. And when I mean back in the day, I mean pre-2019. And I'll talk about the stringer standpoint and the player standpoint, why bagging a racket in a plastic bag was commonly done. So from the stringer standpoint, I can think of two. One, it added a professional touch and great presentation by having it wrapped in a plastic bag. And two, it was great advertising for the company that was sponsoring the stringing team. All right, so now let's talk about the player standpoint. And I can think of four. Number one, Ivan Lendl was believed to be one of the first professional players to wrap his rackets in a plastic bag. And his reasoning for that was that he was using uncoated natural gut and he wanted to protect it from moisture and humidity. So that made sense. Number two, it keeps the racket clean and untouched by anyone besides the stringer. In other words, it goes directly from the stringer's hands to the player's hand. However, I had a shocking experience with a former number one player that I'll share with you at the end of this video. Number three, it might make it easier for the pros to differentiate between their used and their freshly strung rackets. And number four, I had a player once tell me that he liked these plastic bags to reuse them for his sweaty clothes. Although some believe that a racket wrapped in a plastic bag can retain the string tension, there's no scientific proof or truth to that myth. All right, so now we're in June 2019, and this is where the All England Lawn Tennis Club banned the use of plastic bags at Wimbledon. By removing these plastic bags from the racket stringing operation, it also eliminated 4,500 bags of wasted plastic. Since then, players and stringers alike have dismissed the idea of using plastic bags and that it has any practical purpose. All right, so next I wanted to talk about how you can reuse plastic bags today. So if you work in a tennis shop, you would typically have rackets shipped to you like this in a plastic bag. So why not save them and reuse them? So what I like to do is just keep these on hand because I still like to wrap some of my clients' rackets. Uh, it won't look custom like uh, these racket bags, but it'll still use, be useful in uh, three ways. Uh, one, I like to bag the racket when a client has a natural gut. And what I'll do is I'll typically uh, put it up on the rack, wrapped in the uh, plastic bag. But then what I'll do is when they uh, come to pick it up, I'll um, ask them if they want the bag or I'll take it out and then just hand the racket to them. Uh, the second reason is when I hand the racket to another player to deliver to a, the, uh, my client. And my, my thinking is I don't want the racket to touch anyone else's hands. So it's going from my hands to the player's hands, similar to like the, the pros that I mentioned earlier. And the third reason is uh, when I deliver a racket, for the same reason, I like to make sure it stays clean. And uh, in that case, I'll just hand the racket in the plastic bag. Oh, and don't forget to save the bubble wrap. So if you get rackets that are shipped with this bubble wrap, um, and if you haven't seen my video, how to travel with a racket on a plane, uh, you can see how I use this bubble wrap in that video. Okay, so next I'm gonna show you some bagging techniques and I made up these names. So the first one, I'm gonna call it the hidden tail. And what I did is I actually did it on this racket already, but I'll go ahead and take it off. So basically what you're gonna do is you put the racket in and these bags, this uh, bags have holes in it, but uh, what you wanna do is take out all the air. So you wanna just make sure it's uh, nice and flat. And I guess the air will come out eventually since it does have holes, but uh, my rackets don't, my racket bags don't have the uh, holes in it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna um, tighten the, the racket by uh, making a little tail right here at the end. And then what you're gonna do is you just twist it until you get it all the way up to the top. And I call it the hidden tail because what, what you're gonna have is this little pocket right here. And what you're gonna do is you tuck it into that little pocket 
and that's how you hide that tail. So you can either use a rubber band to secure the, uh, the tail, or you can use uh, this uh, blue painter's tape. And this is what you see on a lot of the pros rackets when they were having their rackets bag, they would have it um, secure at the end of their, uh, on the grip. So what I'll typically do if I do this, I'll cut it and at the end, just make sure you double it over so that it's easy to, to find the end. And um, yeah, it looks like this. So there's a little flap right here that they can just peel right off. So that would be just taken off like that. So that's the hidden tail. Now let's say if I have two rackets. So what I'll do is uh, I'll grab the two rackets. They can both fit in one bag. So it's like this. So same thing, you're gonna tighten it and get all the air out. And you just wanna make sure it's nice and flat. And so what you're gonna do is you still twist it like this until you reach that very end of the uh, tail. And then what you're gonna do is just, uh, the pocket is now in between the racket. So what you're gonna do is you kind of wedge it in there and then there's the hidden tail. So you have no, uh, there's no tail that you can see right there. So again, you can use the uh, painter's tape or you can use a rubber band and just secure it that way. All right, so I'm calling that the uh, hidden tail. Now, sometimes I use the uh, double flap over, and what I do, I use it that I use that technique when I have bubble wrap and when I ship rackets to some of my clients. So let's say if I have a racket uh, with the bubble wrap, what I find is that it's hard to make the tail when you have uh, the bubble wrap bag in it because of its thickness. Some bubble wrap will end, um, uh, it'll be shorter than the racket itself. But in this case, this uh, bubble wrap is actually past the butt cap. So what I'll typically do is, um, again, try to flatten it up. And you're just gonna basically fold it over like that. And I'm calling it a double flap because basically you're just gonna uh, fold one side over and then fold the other side over like that. And again, you can um, use a rubber band or you can use the uh, painter's tape. So this technique will work for uh, a single racket or a double racket. All right, so now I'll share my experience with a former number one player, kind of a shocking experience actually. Uh, the year was 1995 and the site was at the US Open. So in this particular year though, he was seated 14th, but three years prior, he was a number one player in the world. So he was playing a match on grandstand and he had his racket sent in to the Babolat stringing team on site and wanted his racket strung while his match was being played. So although I didn't string his racket, I did volunteer to run his racket in uh, during the match. Back then, the stringing room was located in the player's lounge. So I had to run across the grounds, eventually reaching the stadium court where the grandstand court was located. I reached the tunnel, I waited patiently for the changeover, then I darted across the court to deliver this nicely wrapped racket. And here's what he had to say. Take it out. I don't like it wrapped in that plastic bag. Huh, now I'm thinking about my experience 28 years ago. I wonder if the player, Jim, had an issue about plastic waste back then. Thanks for watching, happy stringing, and let your strings play.